Ari, Immortalium here, and today I'm going to be discussing manga magazines, what they are, a bit of the history of them, etc, etc. So first of all, I'm sure most of you who are watching this video are familiar with what manga is. You may even own some manga yourself, um, but what a lot of people still aren't particularly aware of is how these manga are distributed in Japan originally. And the answer to that is that the vast majority of manga, not every manga mind you, there are a couple of exceptions here and there, but the vast majority of manga are distributed through what are called manga magazines. Now these manga magazines are essentially anthologies. Um, they're typically aimed at a specific demographic, that being shonen, shoujo, senin, jose, or kodomo, and they might have a certain theme that runs throughout them. Uh, it might be a case that they're all about adventure, it might be a case that they're all about romance. And there's a large variety and they're essentially anthologies. And the way it works is that a manga magazine will have multiple series running at any one time. Now, manga magazines are typically distributed either weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. Again, there are a couple of exceptions to that, but that's the typical rate of release. So let's take a weekly example, for instance. So if a manga magazine is being released weekly, um, typically each manga series running within the magazine will release one chapter weekly. And you will pick up your mag magazine, let's say you're looking for the newest chapter of One Piece, you'll pick up your weekly Shonen Jump, you will open it up, there'll be one chapter of One Piece in there, about 20 pages-ish, and about 19 other series. And you might be predominantly interested in One Piece, but you might end up reading some of the other series. And maybe reading some of the other series, you might suddenly go, you know what, that seems quite interesting. I might actually like that series. So you might end up going to seek out some of those other series because you came across it in that magazine. Uh, so that's typically how that works. Now, there's a lot to do with the economics of it. I'm not going to get into that here. I'm more discussing what a magazine is and what you should kind of look out for. And when it comes to manga magazine publishers, there's a few that you kind of want to keep your ears out for. So the three main publishers that you will hear about are Shueisha, Kodansha, and Shogakukan. And those are the three big manga publishers. A lot of people remember them that it's Shueisha is the one that publishes Weekly Shonen Jump, Kodansha is the one that publishes Weekly Shonen Magazine, and Shogakukan is the one that publishes Weekly Shonen Someday. However, they also release a wide variety of other magazines across multiple demographics. And you'll see that in a list of manga magazines that will be absolutely dominated by the three names. With regards to the history of manga magazines, um, there were some that were originally released around the late 1800s to early 1900s, but many of the more modern manga magazines that we'd be familiar with today uh, started around the 1950s to 1960s. So many of these magazines have been around for quite a long time, they have been quite successful, and they've become a very important part of the manga publishing industry. Now at this point, I'm sure many of you are thinking to yourself, oh, this is really interesting, but I still don't know what a manga magazine looks like. And that's where I do have something to help. So a few years ago, you will know that I purchased a manga magazine myself just to own one. And that is, it's a copy of Weekly Shonen Jump. Now, this is the most popular manga magazine in the world, still selling millions of copies per week. It's incredibly popular. And many very famous manga series, such as Naruto, Dragon Ball, One Piece, etc., etc., have been released through this magazine. So the first thing you'll notice is how big this is. If I compare it to my trusty Yatsuba, you will see that it is absolutely massive in trim size uh, compared to a standard Tankobon. Um, however, and something that is worth noting compared to a typical Tankobon is the page quality. The page quality, as you can see, is quite lower uh, than your typical Tankobon. And there's multiple reasons for this. One of it is to do with cost. Now, according to the top of this magazine, this was released in 2011. And according to the cover, it says that this was sold for approximately 250 yen. Typically about 100 yen is about a dollar. Um, it can vary a bit, but typically that's what most people kind of guesstimate around. And so if you were to do that conversion, this whole magazine here is only $2.50, which is unbelievable. Now, since then, the price could have changed, I don't know. 
but part of the reason that the paper quality is so poor uh, is in order to be able to keep the release cheap um, and to be able to make it more affordable. Now this is supplemented by the fact that there is plenty of advertisements in this magazine as I will show you. Um, there's a plenty of advertisements in many magazines in order to just be able to uh, make a little money to be able to keep the manga magazines cheap. But another thing is that the paper quality is cheap um, because it encourages you to go out and to buy the collected edition of a manga series. Not only are you getting all of those chapters in one single book, but also the paper quality itself is higher. And so it encourages you to go out and purchase that copy uh, if you're so interested in the series itself. So as I mentioned before, these are very important in the Japanese manga publishing industry. But how about the Western manga publishing industry? Um, so with regards to Weekly Shonen Jump, uh, many years ago, uh, Viz Media did actually end up releasing a physical edition of Shonen Jump. Now, it wasn't the case that every chapter was translated from this and put into that magazine. More so, it was just a compilation of various manga titles that they were releasing from the Weekly Shonen Jump brand and they would just put a bunch of chapters in the magazine. And there were a variety of other supplementary aspects to it, you know, like articles and interviews and etc. etc. Um, but it wasn't a one-to-one, -one, uh, which is the important thing. This meant that uh, Weekly Shonen Jump itself in the West uh, was quite behind in terms of the chapters that were released. And eventually, with the rise of scanlations, unfortunately, many people ended up losing interest in Weekly Shonen Jump, the Western version. And eventually Viz Media turned it into a digital format, which was able to be more in sync uh, with the manga chapters that were being released in Japan. Uh, so that was something that ended up happening. And another famous enough Western manga magazine was Yen Plus. Um, which was a manga magazine released by Yen Press that released manga, manhwa, manhwa, etc, etc. And in fact, uh, a kind of a bit of a gimmicky aspect of it was that the manga magazine could be turned around. Because manga is read from right to left, whereas those other ones, original English language manga, manhwa, uh, manhwa, were published left to right. And so the way that they did it was that they kind of met in the middle and you could turn the magazine upside down and start reading from one side. So that was a very interesting manga magazine, but eventually it did go into digital only. And as far as I'm aware now, I believe even the digital version has stopped. Now this kind of move over to the digital format is something we're actually beginning to see in Japan itself. Japan is traditionally quite resistant when it comes to switching formats. That's why music CDs are still relatively popular over there, um, along with many other physical formats. Um, but as time's gone on, many manga magazines are releasing uh, digital versions of them and some of the smaller ones are even giving up on print entirely and are being released exclusively digitally. And I do think that this is a bit of a shame. As you'll know, I'm a big proponent of physical media and so I do find it a bit sad that many manga magazines are beginning to um, forego physical releases for more digital releases. Um, but I do understand the economics of it and I just think it's important that people are aware of this change, this process, uh, how manga is published in Japan, why manga magazines remain so popular and why many of them are now beginning to shift over to the digital format. So that was my kind of video discussing manga magazines. Hopefully you found this video enjoyable and entertaining. Um, if you've picked up any manga magazines yourself, whether they be Japanese manga magazines, English language manga magazines, or perhaps even manga magazines that were released in many other countries in other languages, uh, let me know if you've picked those up. Let me know your thoughts on manga magazines in general. And of course, if you have any additional information on the topic of manga magazines, uh, do let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye-bye.